Okay, so alongside my new series, I really want a great line of books. But who do we get to write them? Hey, first NSA review. The Clockwork Man is by no means an awful book. It has some gripping moments and the hook should keep you reading till the end. Unfortunately, however, its drawn out structure and lack of anything happening starts to grate on your bones after seven chapters. Yeah, parts of this book can be very difficult to get through. Nothing happens for ages and suddenly death robots and messed up laser cats start flying out of the walls. With better pacing and less filler, this book would have been a lot better. It's a real shame Justin Richards hasn't learned from the mistakes of his previous novels. Richards has written so much for Doctor Who in the past, and most of the books I have read of his have been so bland and pumped full of padding. What's most infuriating about Richards' books is that they're never really, really bad, they're just painfully average. In fairness to him, the ideas he usually has are intriguing, and he has some great sparks of creativity needed to write Doctor Who books. He also actually went to the trouble in this book to actually go to Big Ben to see what it's like inside the clock tower, so the scenes you read inside the book are actually describing how it actually looks in real life. And credit where it's due, that certainly shows commitment. Completely unnecessary commitment, but commitment all the same. Richards unfortunately falls into old habits again for this book, which is such a shame as this is the opening book for the new series adventures. So the plot takes place in 1924 London, as the Doctor really wants to attend the famous British Empire exhibition, which was open at the time. Yeah, so instead of going to the diamond coral reefs of Cotta Flocor or seeing the lightning skies of Cotta Paluni's world, the Doctor's decided he'd rather see an exhibition, celebrating a questionable part of British history us Brits tend to be generally embarrassed and ashamed of in the 21st century. The Doctor ends up investigating a series of attacks after he saves a man called Dixon from a ticking man. Dixon turns out to be a servant of a private members only club in the middle of London which caters for deposed rulers. One resident called Repel at the club claims to be the deposed ruler of a place called Dysteria and a young boy called Freddy is the rightful Tsar of Russia. Yeah, the 1920s wasn't a great time for Russian rulers. There's a character also called Melissa Hart who's at the club and she's hunting down the deposed ruler Shade Vasily of Keturia who's killed millions of people on their planet. After the Doctor and Rose are wrongly accused of being said ruler, they fight off clockwork robots sent by Melissa Hart for about half the book. After Melissa soon realises the Doctor isn't the psychotic previous ruler of Keturia, the plot turns into a whodunit involving crazy robot cats flying at Rose's face and the looming threat of London being destroyed as a result of the deposed leader activating his spaceship. The Doctor, Rose, Melissa, two clockwork robots and a small child will have to save London by climbing through Big Ben and neutralising the danger posed by the deranged psychopath. Yeah, that's probably one of the hardest summaries I've ever had to write. Now, I liked some of the elements in this book, but found the main plot points simply didn't interest me very much. The book tries to hold its plot together with the mystery of not knowing what on earth is happening for most of it, and drip feeds the reader information, which is fine, but it takes so much time to do that, and weird bits of filler just seem to be injected into the plot. I mean, at least we get to see a detailed scene of the car ride to the British Empire exhibition. Said no one ever. This does, however, make for some cool little scenes that are scattered around the book. Check out this little character moment between Rose and the Doctor. I like people to think I'm a bit thick, the Doctor declared to the amusement of a passing couple. Makes them careless and arrogant, ready to explain their dastardly plans in words of one sil... Silly... He struggled to get his mouth around the word. Syllable? That's it. I got English, Rose told him. Then tell me. He stopped abruptly and turned to her, eyes dark and serious. Yes? I've always wondered. Why isn't phonetic spelled with an F? Rose stared back at him. I can teach you how to spell doctor with an F. The characters aren't written quite right, if I'm totally honest. The Ninth Doctor particularly suffered in this book, and doesn't feel like Eccleston's portrayal of the character at all, in my opinion. One minute he seems way too nice, the next he's smashing a man's face into a glass wall. Yeah, that actually happened. Rose, however, was written okay, and I feel like Richards understood her character a little better, even if she wasn't perfect. 
All of that being said, this book has a certain charm about it that I can't quite describe. As much as this book is set in the 1920s, it almost feels like it's set in Victorian times, which is a weird thing to say, but after looking online at reviews, I know I'm not the only person who thought this. Maybe it's the types of characters, or the members club setting, or the general attitudes presented in the book, but whatever it was, it definitely transports you, which is a massive positive. I did feel interested in the mystery, and I think the whole elusive cat thing worked really well. Peter Dixon learned the truth about black cats from his mother. If a black cat comes up to you, she said to him, then that's lucky that is. But if it only comes part way and turns its back, if it has burning green eyes, she sucked in her breath and shook her head. They say your father saw a black cat that morning on the way to his ship. I reckon it had green eyes. I reckon he should have come home that very moment like any sensible sailor. He'd be here now if he'd paid attention to that black cat. They're fickle animals, cats, don't trust them. They only ever think for themselves. If they bring you luck, good or bad, you can be sure it's for their own reasons. The black cat Dixon saw almost 30 years later was neither approaching nor turning tail. It watched him from across the street with glassy, reflective eyes. It was impossible to tell what colour they really were. Was that lucky or not? Dixon took a deep breath of smoggy London air. If you decide to read this book, the whole cat thing will make sense, and it's scattered throughout the story. I enjoyed the sense of mystery and almost otherworldliness this brought, and it gave another layer to this otherwise linear plot. So, to summarise, I do think this book is a bit disappointing, especially seeing as it's the first book in the series. Please do not be put off by the NSA range after this book, because you've got some really good titles in this series. The Clockwise Man may have a lot of padding and bad character writing, but the plot is just about good enough to keep you semi-invested throughout. I'm going to give this a 4 out of 10. Disappointing start to the NSA range, but still worth a read if you're a Ninth Doctor fan. Okay, so that comes to the end of my review of Clockwise Man. I hope you did enjoy the video. Um, please let me know your thoughts of this book down in the comments below. I kind of felt a little bit bad slating this book, because it does have some good bits in it, but yeah, I, I wasn't completely convinced, if I'm honest. Um, as I said, just let us know in the comments below your thoughts, and I will see you in the next one. Thanks a lot, guys.